have made their way into the booth. To the left, we have our scoreboard operators and those of you who will be bringing you the game on Loot YouTube on the A&M YouTube channel. Go to uh, A and M, Alabama A and M channel, and you should be able to locate the game stream. Waiting on the results of the coin toss, then we're going to get the underwriters in. Hopefully, it will take two minutes, and then we should be ready for the kickoff. The clock is stopped at two minutes and thirty-one seconds because there was the delay. So the choir end up singing the national anthem. And as we look at the coin toss. The Bulldogs have won the toss and going to the first of the second half. Lane now has a choice. They will take the ball, which may not have been the way to go today. The Bulldog defense is going to be hungry. They're looking for a shutout today. I can say that right now. And we come back. We'll give you the details on who starts where. Let's take a quick minute timeout, minute timeout. We come back. We'll have the kickoff in the 12th annual Lewis Cruz Classic from the Lewis Cruz Stadium on the beautiful campus of Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University in Huntsville. This is the Alabama A&M Network. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver, and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. My grandpa Lou is the reason why my dad and I started racing, and I'm really proud to follow on his tracks. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. I've learned a lot on this journey with my grandpa Lou, and the memories of my grandpa will always be with me. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Talking about Alzheimer's can be really tough. But if you notice something, have a conversation with your loved one. Encourage them to see a doctor or offer to go with them. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. The Alzheimer's Association provides care, support, and research to help you take control of the situation with your family and manage the disease together. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Visit alz.org slash time to talk. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the ad council. The first half of Bulldog football is made possible by WJAB-TV, AAMU Front Page, and Electronic Media Communications at Alabama A&M University. Now, enjoy the game on the Alabama A&M Network, WJAB-FM, and WJAB.org. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Physical Education Complex. Xavier Lankford will start at quarterback today. Last week he was 11 of 22, 50% 50 for 105 yards, a touchdown, and a long of 62 yards. Bulldogs preparing to kick off. That's number 38. Number 38 for the Bulldogs who's going to kick off as soon as I get to that page. <laughs> And that's Moffitt. The kick goes end over end. It's going to sail into the end zone. That's what Mr. Moffitt brings to the Bulldogs. That ball will be kicked into the end zone. And that means Lane will start first and 10 from their 25-yard line. Starting lineup for the Bulldogs defense. Number four, Zarion Hayes. Number 93, Dorian Wesley, defensive tackle. Nose tackle, number 60, Liston Richardson, defensive end. Number seven, Jamarion Ellis. Middle linebacker, number 51, Xavier Billingsley. Strong side linebacker, number 12, Marvin Smith. Weak side linebacker, number 9, Jordan Mitchell. Right corner, Caleb Dawson. Left corner will be Amari Pate. One cornerback, Kenichukwu Iziomume. And another cornerback will be number 21, Anthony Fielding. Quarterbacking Ford Lane. Number 4, Polo Solomon. 6'1", 185-pound, red shirt sophomore. Lane starts first and 10. Two receivers to the far side. Now one will go in motion to the right and then come back left. Handoff for Lane, and the Bulldog defense gets there to Hervey. The handoff, as soon as I find that number, number 10, Kylan Dule, Dool, excuse me, 5'8", 185-pound redshirt junior. Give him a half a yard loss, second down and 11 for Lane from just outside their 25-yard line. Polo Solomon in at quarterback. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far, H back to the far side. Pistol back will get the handoff and go right up the middle, but no, it's a fake and a quick screen to the near side. 
in and out of the hands of number 14 for Lane. That's number 14, Jaquez Jones, 5'11", 175-pound redshirt junior out of Orlando, Florida, Dr. Phillips High School. Third down and call it 10 for Lane. No score. We are just underway. The Lewis Cruz Classic 12th Annual. The threatening rain showers in the area have suppressed the crowd a bit. Here's Polo back to pass. He's going to look deep over the middle. The pass is incomplete. Solomon's pass is. It was intended for number 14. That's Jacquez Jones again. Incomplete pass. Now Lane will punt. Noah Shiles, number four, excuse me, number thirteen, back deep to punt, back deep to return the punt. Looks like number four. No, it is number one, Terrell Gardner. High snap, but pulled in. Good punt. It's going to spin the air. Gardner does not call for the fair catch. He's going to put the ball on the ground. It's on the ground. He muffed it. The ball still loose out near the forty-yard line. Thought Gardner was going to call for a fair catch. Looks like he tried to do a little bit too much with that one. The wind here has picked up. He lost control. Lane gets the muff punt and will cover at their own 40-yard line by Lane's number 45, Asmar Hassan, 5'10", 195-pound linebacker, junior out of Atlanta, Georgia, Lithonia High School. Polo Solomon brings them back on the field, first and 10. First and ten for Lane. Solomon's pass intended for number 81. Bounces in the air, and it is picked off by the Bulldogs. Oh, my goodness. That is the sign on the field. The signal from the official that is an interception. Lane's leaving the field. The Bulldogs are exchanging teams. First and ten. They will mark the ball at the Bulldog 44-yard line. First and ten for the Bulldogs. Pulled one back. Interception made by number six, Imari Pate, the 6'2", 205-pound safety, the junior. Wow. Okay, so one thing we're going to look for today are the number of turnovers that the Bulldogs are able to wrangle in. And now we're even. Bulldogs lost. They didn't call it a fumble. It's a muffed punt. But that is a turnover because Lane maintained possession. Now the Bulldogs get it back. First and ten. The Bulldogs 44-yard line, 13 and 52 left to go in the first half. Each team has had the ball. Now let's see if we can settle down here and get something going. Wow. Looks like we have a timeout on the field, but <laughs> now I see a television-type person on the field giving us a timeout. So let's take a quick 30 seconds with them. They might be reviewing this. So let's take a quick 30 seconds. We'll come back. This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. I learned patience from my adoptive dad. All he had to say was, Hey, you got this. Just breathe. Hey. <laughs> We're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Might have to start a band. <laughs> I got it. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. <laughs> Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. This message is brought to you by Adopt US Kids, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Stadium, the Lewis Cruz Physical Education Physical Education Complex for the Lewis Cruz Classic. Had lots of events, particularly the Hill Project, which kicked off yesterday here on campus. Every member of the Lee Ninth Grade Academy was invited to come on campus and spend the day on campus. You know, you start here, you can go anywhere. Every ninth grader from Lee had that opportunity. There will be other events along the year and along their four years in college. So you get to raise them, get them interested, and then hopefully we'll be talking about another record freshman class on the Hill like we are this year. Congratulations to the admission office and those who are going to help them matriculate here on the Hill. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. They have marked the ball at the 47-yard line. The challenge or the review allows the Bulldogs to keep the ball. That interception stands first and 10 for the 46. Xavier Langford in at quarterback. We're going to check to see who the running back is. We're told that Donovan Eaglin was not going to play today. Well, now then we have a different formation. There are three people in the backfield. We're going to hand it off right up the middle. 
And that handoff went to Bulldogs number 26, Ryan Morrow, six foot, 203 pound sophomore from Maplesville, Alabama. Maplesville High School. Quick pass from the Bulldogs to the left side. That's Gardner. Gardner tries to make a move. He's just going to get a yard out of it. Bulldogs going to hurry up that time. Second down and nine in lane territory from the lane 43-yard line. Excuse me, the lane 38-yard line. Morrow in the backfield. Eagland did not start. Now the Bulldogs, two receivers on the far side. C.J. comes in motion, Cameron Young. He'll set up in the slot on the near side. The ball's on the far hash. Second down and nine. Langford takes a snap. He's going to drop back, look deep down the field. He's going to let it fly. He's got Keenan Hambrick. Oh, just over the outstretched hands. Oh, my goodness. If Langford keeps running, excuse me, not Langford. <laughs> if Hambrick keeps running, that's a touchdown. He had his man beat. Oh, my goodness. Number three, Joseph Wilson was on the defense for Lane. You know, the new thing now is someone mentioned the other day, double numbers in college. We just don't have one number four. We got two number fours. We don't have one five. We have two fives. Two sixes, two sevens. G. Monendi, two elevens. Third down and nine for the Bulldogs from the Lane 38. Clark comes in motion out of the backfield. He'll set up at the 40-yard line on the near side. Trip receivers near, too far. Empty backfield for Langford. Langford looks, looks, looks. He's going to find and throws a dart. And, oh, my goodness, he got blown up. The intended receiver did by number seven, Jeremiah Brown for Lane. Number four, Cameron Young on the reception. Young hangs on. That's enough for a Bulldog first down. Down to the Lane 26-yard line. Bulldogs driving. Oh, my goodness, that was a dangerous pass. Three receivers to the near side, tight end. Langford, play action pass. He's going to step out of the pocket. He's under pressure. He tries to get away but doesn't. Langford will go down. That's number 45 for Lane on the tackle. Asmar Hassan, we've called his name already, a linebacker. Junior out of Atlanta. That's a tackle for loss all the way back to the Lane 29-yard line. 12.08 left to go. No score. Bulldogs driving. Mm. Crowd tempered a bit by the rain that came in the area. Two receivers near side, two to the far, but now Bryson Clark tight end comes in motion. Hand off, and the pile will go push, get straight ahead push from number 26. That's Ryan Morrow. Maplesville High School won several state championships in the state of Alabama. Stopped by number 51, Tyshawn Gator. Third down and eight from the lane, 24, go the Bulldogs. Not an empty backfield set. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far. Morrow to Langford's left. Four down lineman for Lane. Langford's going to take the snap and run right up the middle. He's at the 20, 15. He makes a move. He's hit and brought down at the 11-yard line. That will be enough for a first time, first down for the Bulldogs. Jeremiah Malborn and number nine, Marlon Smart for Lane on the tackles. But a little too late. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from the Lane 11. Hand off again, right up the middle. That's Morrow. He twists and turns, bounces off every first contact, second contact, and then the third. And he will be down at the five-yard line, or just inside the five. Give him a pickup of six on the play. Second down and four for the Bulldogs. They can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Now flags come in from all over. I don't know if this is a legal procedure. Looking for the referee, and there he is. Legal procedure against the Bulldogs, false start. You can't set yourself in a three-point stance and then come out of that stance once you come set. That will back the Bulldogs up to the lane 10-yard line, second down and nine. Bulldogs have to get inside the lane one for a first down. Still no score. Still no score in the game, 10-26. Ted Dixie, Daryl Griffin, and Marcus Sims in the booth with us. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far. Play action pass, RPO, pass to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Cameron Young with the touchdown reception. Bulldogs go up 6 to nothing. 10 minutes, 11 seconds left to go in the first period. The extra point to come. Brilliant opening drive for the Bulldogs, just like last week at Vanderbilt. Out 
out of the snap of Miller, the hold of McCready, the extra point attempt by Barbosa. And we will see the result. It's good. Bulldogs go up 7-0, 10-11 left to go in the first period. Let's take a timeout, 90 seconds. 90-second timeout. This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. My grandpa Lou is the reason why my dad and I started racing, and I'm really proud to follow on his tracks. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. I've learned a lot on this journey with my grandpa Lou, and the memories of my grandpa will always be with me. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Talking about Alzheimer's can be really tough. But if you notice something, have a conversation with your loved one. Encourage them to see a doctor or offer to go with them. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. The Alzheimer's Association provides care, support, and research to help you take control of the situation with your family and manage the disease together. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Visit alz.org slash time to talk, a message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. If I could be you. And you could be me for just one hour. If you could find a way to get inside each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Luke Moffat. Walk a mile in my shoes. Come on, man. <laughs> Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Classic at the Lewis Cruz Physical Education Complex. Ted Dixie, Daryl Griffin, our spotter, Marcus Sims in. That kickoff from Mr. Moffitt went through the end zone again. We love that. First and 10 from Lane College, the Dragons, from their 25-yard line, first and 10. Bulldogs will shift on defense. You'll see that a lot. Bulldogs start with everyone's line scrimmage and they shift out in position. Here's a handoff. The running back trying to go to the outside. He had nowhere to go. Tackle made on that play by the Bulldogs, number 96. No, 95. Hayden Guilford, 6'2", 220-pound senior. Loganville, Georgia, Grayson High School. That's the high school of Good friend of mine, fraternity brother, Dana Pugh, who's now on the faculty at Alabama A&M. He was the principal. Third down and call it 16 for Lane. They're going to try that sweep again to the right side. And really, there's just nowhere to go. Kylan Dew, 5'8", 185-pound redshirt junior on the carry. He'll get the ball almost all that lost yardage back. Tackled by number nine, Jordan Mitchell. Third and 11. For Lane, Bulldogs leading seven to nothing on a great opening drive. It's not even nine minutes left to go in the first period, and Lane's already down seven nothing. Trip receiver bunch to the near side. Solomon back to pass. He's trying to get out of the pocket, but he's down quickly. Several Bulldogs get there and get in there again. <laughs> Number nine, Jordan Mitchell, and Mitchell gives him the stomp out move, and Lane. Playing again, fourth down, 11. This is what you want to see. Playing down in division, as I'm saying, the Bulldogs are punching down. Noah Shiles is back to punt. Back deep for the Bulldogs will be Terrell Gardner. He's got to make sure he catches the ball this time or just call a fair catch and let it bounce. Last time, he tried to find the ball and catch it, but the swirling wind did him in. Now Gardner being driven back, he'll field it at the 43. Trying to come near side, he does. He gets a hole. He gets a block at the 50. Still on his feet at the 45. Still on his feet. Pulled out of bounds. Gardner will go out of bounds short of the 45-yard line of Lane. Tackle made by Lane's number one, Anthony Evelyn. And with that, the Bulldogs will start again in Lane territory. First and 10 from the Lane 48-yard line. Games like this, when you punch up in class, we know the results. You feel bad because you can't gain any traction, but that wasn't the case last week at Vanderbilt. Bulldogs did more than enough as Moffitt had a 65-yard kickoff that went all the way to the end zone. He was talking in the pregame about a 74-yarder. They take off the yardage that you get to get to start your play, and it's usually at 25, and I think Vanderbilt had that wrong. Inside handoff to 
Number 26, Ryan Morrow for the Bulldogs. He will pick up, give it a quick three. Down to the lane, 45-yard line, line, second and seven. Trying to get all those cobwebs out from preseason. Bulldogs up seven to nothing. Two receivers to the, excuse me, one receiver to the far side. Two receivers to the far side now. That's Gardner in the slot. Hambrick is to the near side. We have an H back and a tight end to the near side. And a handoff, no RPO. Morrow down the middle. He'll turn and then get the pass from Langford. Good job. Morrow fighting off one defender, two defenders, still on his feet. He gets driven back, though, but he loses like four yards from where he caught the ball. He's tackled by number 31, Walter Tatum for Lane. Would turn out to be maybe a seven-yard gain. Ends up being a two-yard gain, if that. Third down, and we will call it six for the Bulldogs. Third and six. Lane doing a good job on the outside holding up the A&M receivers, but I'd like to see Hambrick go deep again. He's got like a four or five inch advantage on number three. Wilson, his, that corner is listed at 5'10", but he looks like he's shorter than that. Offset eye. Langford's going to roll the pocket Hambrick's way. He's got pocket Hambrick with it. Hambrick makes the catch at the 32. He'll make a move inside the 30. Hambrick will be put on the ground at the 29-yard line. That is enough for Lane. First down. That's Hambrick's first catch of the season. Last season, he dropped too many. And Vandy, you heard Coach Maynard talk about what he wanted to see an improvement. He said, your team improves more between week one and week two. Well, the improvement there is that Hambrick caught the ball. Got so bad for him last week that he dropped an easy one across the middle. But, boy, has he been intense this week. Two receivers near side now. Young will go in motion from the slot right, slot left. Play action pass at the RPO, and, ooh, it was almost picked off. Or did they pick it off? Yes, the official signals, lame ball. Number 59, Lamarius Jackson, 5'11 linebacker, 225 pounds out of Montgomery, Alabama. We Tumka High School. Made the pick. Langford ran the RPO, but they stepped right into the lane of the pass. Number seven, Jeremiah Brown batted it up, and then it was the quarterback's worst nightmare, a tip ball. Second turnover for the Bulldogs. Lane did not get any points off the first one. Bulldogs got the second turnover and scored on it. Now the Bulldogs get to play a little bit of defense, and they don't mind that today. First and ten from the lane, 34. Mm. Something else you can clean up, and that would be trying to fool them more on an RPO. But Lane has watched plenty of film of Mr. Langford, and you've got to know that's one of his plays. First and 10, Solomon trying to run an RPO of his own. Lane does, and the pass is just a little bit far out of the outstretched hands. Number 14, Jones of Langford, incomplete. Second down and 10 for Solomon, rather, the quarterback. Polo Solomon, 6'1", 185-pound redshirt sophomore. Out of Las Vegas, Nevada, he's a transfer from Jacksonville State to Lane. We talked about earlier the transfer portal. This is where it really works for you. You got a kid who graduates and has eligibility left. Then you don't have to give him a scholarship. Trip receivers to the near side for Lane, one to the far. Solomon has one in the backfield with him, but a timeout is going to be called. We're going to take a minute and a half timeout with them. Bulldogs up on lane, 7 to nothing, 6.03. Left to go in the first. This is the Alabama A&M Radio Network. My mom has taken up going to the park to practice yoga. My dad's going to a club, but not a book club, a salsa club. Finding new hobbies comes with age. My mom has started getting lost and not knowing where she's going. Becoming lost or disoriented doesn't. Confusion with time or place may be a sign of Alzheimer's. An early diagnosis can help improve the quality of life for your loved one. Learn the warning signs of Alzheimer's at 10signs.org. Brought to you by the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Into the building for the first time after the shooting, it was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Poma, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how 
at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Classic. Lane has just run another RPO for a first down. And now the Bulldogs, did he take it back? Yes, they did. The Bulldogs just intercepted the ball again. That's number two, Caleb Dawson, who led the Bulldogs in tackles last week at Vandy. Another Appalachian State transfer, folks. We take it back. Bulldogs now, even on the turnovers, 5.30 left to go. The Bulldogs turn lane away, up 7 to nothing. And they will start first and 10 from the 41-yard line of the Bulldogs. i tell you what I liked at Vanderbilt. The SEC has the electronic sign with the timeouts that the timeout person holds. So you know exactly what you have. Kerry will get better. Kerry Macklin back at the station getting us on and off the air. We thank you so much for that. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from their 41-yard line. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near. Pistol back in the backfield. Gardner in motion from left to right. Now we're going to hand it off. Here comes Morrow. Good block on the outside. Morrow at the 50. 45-40. Morrow dropped. It just outside, no, just inside the 40-yard line to the 38. Gertrude, you should have seen that run. Great execution by the Bulldogs. Number 25, Nicholas Patterson on the tackle for Lane. The Bulldogs first and 10 from the Lane 38. You're going to see the passing game. Now the Bulldogs will stack the outside receivers. And then RPO to the far side. That's Gums with the reception. Number 11, he's driven out of bounds. No gain on the play. LaVar Gums, wide receiver, 6'2", 195-pound senior from Los, from New Orleans, Central Michigan transfer, and he's tackled by number 31, Tatum, for Lane. We go play at Baton Rouge next week. We got enough folks from down in Louisiana, man. I should have a good pregame meal next week. Call it second and 10 for the Bulldogs from the 38 of Lane. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far. Offset eye with Clark in the front, Morrow in the back. To Langford's right. Langford's going to look to the sideline. Coach Jason Mai, the quarterback coach, is going to make the signal after he gets the call from Dwayne Taylor, the offensive coordinator sitting next to us. Hand off to Morrow. He'll step, stutter step, left step, back right. And by the time he gets on the ground, that play will result in another Bulldog first down. Ten-yard carry on the play. Tackled again by number 45, Hassan. Now they're going to say Morrow's just a little bit short of the first down by a half a yard. Now they'll say first and 10. They'll move the sticks. Quick snap for the Bulldogs. Morrow again, right up the middle. Can't stop it. Morrow sidesteps the safety, but he's pulled to the ground down to the 15-yard line of lane. The sticks weren't even set yet. Got another first down for the Bulldogs. That's Malborn on the tackle for lane. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far. Tight end to the far side for the Bulldogs. Morrow in the backfield. He's going to get it again. Morrow charges ahead, pushes that pop. Still on his feet. Jumps out. And, ooh, he gets upended on the far side. Oh, my goodness. Someone got there in a hurry. That's number 31, Tatum again, who pulled him down. But someone from the secondary ran up and really upended him to help out the tackle. We have an official timeout. Trying to see if there was someone down in the medical staff. Yeah, Emma's headed out there. And someone is down. So we will take a look at them. This is going to be a bit of a long one. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout. Bulldogs up 7 to nothing. 3-11 left to go in the first. This is the Alabama A&M Network. My simple solution to the problem was remove people from the sea and, and help them feel safer. In response to attacks against Asian Americans, Maddie Park raised over $250,000 to donate cab rides to the Asian community. There is so much more work to be done. We really need to come together and tackle this issue as a community. Support the Asian community. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. We are back at the Lewis Cruz Physical Education Complex. Down on the field is number 26, Ryan Morrow. He got upended, but he makes it off the field under his own power. And just to let you know who those folks are, we're talking about our medical staff, Emma Brackett, the head football athletic trainer, Andrew Davis, the assistant, Amaya Allen, Retrice Mallard, Madison Page, and LaMisha Parker. As we hand off again, the new running back will be number 23, Isaiah Nwokenwo who pushes that ball, almost got his first touchdown to the Bulldog. They'll stop him just short on right at the one-yard line. 
That should be enough for a Bulldog first down, and it is. First and goal for the Bulldogs, leading 7 to nothing already. 3.09 left to go in the first. And now overload right, going to hand it off, push the pile. A formation like that, touchdown, Bulldogs. Well, a formation like that, you expect it on the goal line, division football championship subdivision versus division two. You should see that touchdown, and that's exactly what we got. Let's see the replay, who put it in the end zone. And that looked like number 23 for the Bulldogs. That's Nwokenwo, who goes in the end zone. His first touchdown as a Bulldog. Now Miller with the snap. McCready with the hold. Barbosa with the kick. And it is good, but several flags come in on the snap. Let's see what the call is. The Barbosa's hitting their one on the head. They was headbutting each other, so it must have been against Lane. Let's see what the referee says as the cheerleaders take the AAMU flags. Those flags have gotten smaller. Legal participation against Lane. Someone ran on the field late. So the extra point counts. The penalty is declined. Bulldogs go up 14 to nothing. 30-second timeout. This is the Alabama A&M Radio Network. solution to the problem was remove people from the scene and help them feel safer. In response to attacks against Asian Americans, Maddie Park raised over $250,000 to donate cab rides to the Asian community. There is so much more work to be done. We really need to come together and tackle this issue as a community. Support the Asian community. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Classic, number 12 in the books. The Bulldogs up 14 to nothing. Ted Dixie, Daryl Griffin, Marcus Sims on hand, a special guest in the booth with us, Kevin Cofield, as I look for the drive statistics on our tablet. We're almost there. Boy, we're getting a lot of plays here already. All right, it goes the other way. So Barbosa's kick was good, had the substitution penalty. They do not have the drive summary listed yet. But nevertheless, another kickoff, and man, it sailed into the end zone. I'm going to tell you something. It has, <laughs> to get three kickoffs that go into the end zone and cause Lane to have to take the ball, they're 25. I've never seen that. As long as I've been broadcasting for Alabama A&M University. And number 38, Luke Moffitt, has just given us three this week and had one last week. You heard the pregame interview with special teams and kickers coach Richard Wilson. And we just said, man, we had to think about Chance Wilson when we came back from that. But, man, Moffitt's going to make you forget everybody. Every ball he kicks is going to the end zone. Man, I love that. First and ten for Lane. Two receivers either side. They'll zigzag the formation. Then he'll hand it off. And Lane does a good job getting push up front. And they'll push the ball to the 29-yard line of Lane. Lane beat Tennessee State last year to end the season. Lane's coach had a couple of words for Coach Maynard earlier this year. But it was bulletin board material. As the three receivers throw the far side one to the near. Going to hand it off again. And another fine run by number 10, Duhe. Or Du, D-U-H-E. We'll go and get a pronunciation for you at the half, folks. We apologize for that. Nevertheless, Lane's play will result in another Lane first down out to their 35-yard line. Bulldog defense needs to tighten up some. Lane has made hay by running the football, and that is the staple of the SIAC, running the football. Trip receivers to the far side for Lane, one to the near. Pistol back in with Solomon and quarterback. Solomon, the Jacksonville State transfer. Bulldog showing blitz, but he'll find his way to the outside. Does Solomon good pitch and catch there by Lane. Goes out to the Lane 38-yard line. Reception made by Lane's number eight, Raheem Quinnery. Quinney, excuse me. 5'10", 183-pound sophomore out of Mobile, Alabama. Theodore High School. Bulldogs will journey there to play Jackson State again. That's the same weekend as Maxwell and Huntsville. But I'll be in Mobile. Trip receivers to the far side, one to the near. Pistol back in. Solomon looking right. He's going to throw right. Oh, my goodness. That was a rocket that he threw on a slant. 
complete to number 84, Terrence Holland, a 5'10", 165-pound freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida. Trip receive, same formation. Trip receivers far side, one to the near. Solomon with the pistol back. Now play is being held up. I know they're going to go ahead with it. First and ten, now flag comes in. Legal procedure. False start, we hear the referee call. Now some information for Alabama and m Athletics here. First year of football here, here on the Hill was 1912. First year of NCAA Division I competition, 1998. Overall record, 445 victories, 425 losses, 33 ties, and a handoff again. And Lane putting together a nice drive here. They'll push the ball all the way up to the 50-yard line. And that's due again on a carry. Second down and seven for Lane from the 50. They'll get the snap off. Here's Dew again. He went right side and came back left. Dew picked up a serious quick seven yards on the play. That will bring us up to the last play. Well, that will be the end of the first quarter. Marvin Smith on the tackle. Safety 6'2", 220 pounds out of Loganville, Georgia. A Kennesaw State transfer. So, we'll take this minute and a half timeout. Bulldogs up 14 to nothing, but Lane is driving. This is the Alabama a &M Sports Radio Network. The Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council present the story of Tom and Levi. Tom is the smartest man I know. He's been a professor at two major universities, He's been a teacher for over 40 years. One day, he told me that he was having um, problems in his classes. I think one of the students had asked the question and he didn't remember the answer. I also noticed that he was letting his class out earlier than they were supposed to let out. And he was telling them that he was doing it as a favor to them, but I think in reality he just wanted to get out of there. Um, I was really starting to worry because I saw something was wrong. Levi and I talked about how it would change our lives, but he was there beside me and my love for him was just immense. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash our stories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. And might you be buzzed when you suddenly love everything? You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. <laughs> I love our kickball league. Oh, I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzz warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Classic 12th Annual. Lane with the ball, the end of the first quarter. Bulldogs are up 14 nothing. Lane driving. Second down and eight from the Bulldog 41. Solomon back to pass. He's going to go deep. He got a receiver in the middle of the field. He's hit, but he will fall into the end zone. Touchdown lane. Jaquez Jones with the touchdown reception from Solomon. Call it 47, no, 40, no, 38-yard touchdown pass. Man. Solomon looks good. And now Lane's gotten on the board. The lane band came. Lane's colors, red, white, and blue, mostly red and blue. As we look at the first half statistics, we have an intern in here today, Kevin Cofield. We'll get to some of the first half statistics while the extra point is to come. On the hold of number 17, that's Gaston. The kick was made by number 13, Shawls. And Lane now cuts the court at 14-7. to 7. Let's take a 30-second timeout. This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. Welcome to WJAB-TV, where it's easy to catch up with the latest school updates around campus. Stay up to date with the latest sports. Indulge in different lecture series from notable people who've made a difference in the world. Enjoy free and easy access through our social media. Experience greatness through your screen. 
This is WJAB TV. Welcome back. The lane drive culminates with them in a touchdown. Noah Shaw's extra point attempt is good, and the Bulldogs lead 14 to 7. Ted Dixie, Daryl Griffin, our spotter, Marcus Sims, who will have the halftime show for you, and our intern, Kevin Cofield. Lane preparing to kick off from their 35 back deep for the Bulldogs will be number one, Terrell Gardner, number four, Cameron Young. And Gardner will field it at the 16. He comes back to the middle of the field. Gardner looking for a block, but he will be stymied. The 31-yard line, 25-yard return. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Jonathan Monroe on the tackle for Lane. Crowd was building for the Lewis Cruz Classic. Have to think that the rain held us up. The predicted rain. But I don't get it. It's college football. Sometimes you got to earn your stripes. But you know these dog houses take up a great deal of space. At first I didn't know how big they were. They looked like they're about 12 by 20. You get a lot of folks in there. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from their 30-yard line. Bulldogs going from right to left. Lane will be going from left to right. Langford in the backfield. Play action pass. He's going to throw it. No, he'll pull it back down as he is pulled to the ground. Hold the ball just a little bit long there. Lane got to him. Sacked on the play with number 92, Jaquintus Summers. 6'2", 285-pound sophomore out of Pritchard. Viger High School. Loss of two. Second down and 12 for the Bulldogs from just outside their 28-yard line. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far. Offset eye to the near side. Lankford takes a snap. Gives it Morrow back in the ball game. Morrow picks his way. It's going to get pulled down, but he gets back to the line of scrimmage, which means he picked up two yards, the original line of scrimmage, that is. 13-33 left to go. Bulldogs now up 14-7. to Lane finally answered. If you wonder about Lane, Lane defeated Tennessee State last year as the overcast sky now has the lights here on the playing surface, obscuring our view a bit from Normals Hill. And it's a pretty view it is. Third down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Empty backfield set for Lankford. We hear the coaches screaming and yelling because the formation is not the, where it needs to be. Three seconds on the play clock. Going to throw it out here to a screen to Gardner. Gardner makes the catch. He'll make one move. He doesn't get past the other defender. He will go down at the 33-yard line. Tackled made by Tyson Gator. And that's fourth down for the Bulldogs. Not a good offensive series that time for the Bulldogs. A loss. Get back to the line of scrimmage. And then we couldn't get the formation together or the read right. Langford being a little bit hard on himself. Probably not as hard as Coach Maynard's going to be. That's for sure. As I mentioned in the pregame with the interview with Coach, he was on edge this week. He was squeezing every bit of performance from his student athletes. And that's at 5.30 in the morning. And then they have to go to class. So now back to punt for the Bulldogs. Uh, McCready, but a whistle comes in. McCready averaging 54 yards a punt, and that one right there landed inside the 15-yard line. He was standing on the 20. Legal procedure, five-yard penalty on the Bulldogs. Push them outside. It's two sticks now. They'll go back to the 28-yard line. McCready's going to try it again. Austin McCready, 6'1", 195-pound junior from New Orleans. Yeah, that's right. Somebody's going to bring some food to Baton Rouge next week. McCready gets the ball off. And, my goodness, that is a rocket. And that drives Lane inside their 20. And he's tackled right away. I mean, that's a weapon you can't. The 28. Two, 32, 42. That's a 52-yard punt. Fielded by a tackle made by number 39, Miles Gilmore. Yeah, you heard me ciphering, folks. That's a 52-yard punt right there. Terrence Howard was tackled immediately on the return for Lane. So now we will switch ends. Lane will now go left to right. 11.59 left to go in the half. Bulldogs up 14-7. to seven. Lane on their last possession put together a drive to get seven points. Now the Bulldog defense has to answer. 
this is the game that we don't get to see the death unless we get a good lead. Here's a handoff on the jet sweep. No, it's another RPO. And then, no, it's a delayed pass out to the flat. My goodness, that's a good-looking play. For Lane, it was a faked handoff, fake RPO, then a throw to the near side, caught by number five, Virgil Young, who, after he was done, ended up with a first down. First and ten for Lane from their 34-yard line. Coach Bulwar, the defensive coordinator for the Bulldogs, may have to pull something out of his bag of tricks here. Here's another handoff going left side. Again, that's Dew. Dew picks his way, got the quick five yards out to the 39-yard line of Lane. Second down and five. Tackle made by number seven, Jamarion Ellis. Bulldogs showing press. Now they're going to blitz. He ran up late. Now the flag finally comes in. There was contact made. Before the snap, that's going to be offside of the Bulldogs. Trying to see which number that was, and that may be Biambi. Number 50, Demetrius Biambi, the linebacker junior from Miami, Florida, from Coral Gables High School, was faking the blitz. But he came up and made contact when he got into the neutral zone. And just gave Lane nearly a first down. They're going to be about a half yard short. Second down and call it six inches. Be a first down because it was first and five and with two penalties. So first and ten for Lane from their 44-yard line, trailing the Bulldogs 14 to 7. 11:05 left to go. Quick toss to the left side, and the Bulldog defense gets there, and they get there in a hurry. First Bulldog there. If we can get his number, number two. That's my guy, Caleb Dawson. I mean, he was shot like a cannon, and he got there along with Ellis. Back lane up. Will they give him progress back to the line of scrimmage? Second down and 10 for Lane. Bulldogs will shift again. They don't get movement. There's a handoff, and everyone ran right by him. No lane fits or run fits, as coach would say. And that runner duels all the way down the 41-yard line. I was looking for the Bulldogs to get 200 yards rushing. Duel may get that. They put him down at the 42-yard line of the Bulldogs. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Oh, excuse me, for the Lane Dragons. Trip receivers to the near side, one to the far. A new running back in for Lane. We'll try to get his number. Solomon still in at quarterback. He'll clap his hands, look to the sidelines. Number 28, no, excuse me, number 26, Marlon Peters. Marion, excuse me, Marion Peters is in the backfield now for Lane. Trip receivers to the near side, one to the far. That's our most successful formation. Going to hand it off. The Bulldogs don't get there, and they don't tackle when they do. Running back is going to end up all the way up to the Bulldogs' 35-yard line, down rather. Second down and three. Bulldogs looking a little bit like Swiss cheese right now with Lane and their running attack. Second down and call it three. Bulldogs are going to show blitz coming on a run blitz now. And try to make Lane throw the ball, but Lane has been effective throwing the ball. We might be in for a dogfight. Bulldogs up 14-7. to 9-16 left to go. Play clock is at nine. Here comes the blitz off both corners. They're going to try one-on-one -on -one down the right sideline. Incomplete. Oh, my gosh. That was almost a spectacular one-handed catch. You know, the ball is much tackier now than it used to be. And with all the receivers wearing gloves, no wonder you see so many one-handed catches because the ball almost sticks there. The intended receiver was Raheem Quinney. Ask me about that one later. Third down and three from the Bulldog 35 goes Lane. Two receivers to the near side, two to the far side, one pistol back. Bulldogs counter three down linemen, one standing up. They're going to roll the pocket to the near side and in and out of the hands. Mm. Number 14, Jones. Man, that's a tough one. Lane was going to have a first down there. But Solomon's not leaving the field yet. He's looking over for a play. Lane's going to go for it. Absolutely. Marvin Smith led the Bulldogs in tackles at the end of the first, followed by Mitchell. Smith had five, Mitchell had three, Billingsley had two, Ellis had one. Fourth down and three for Lane from the Bulldog 35. Bulldogs leading 14 to 7. 8.57 left to go in the first half. Not as large a crowd as I was expecting for today. 
Timeout now on the field. We'll take it with them. 30-second timeout. Bulldogs up 14-7. This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. I'm just texting him back. I'm just posting a story. I'm just changing the song. I'm just... No. When it comes to distracted driving, just don't. Sending a text takes your eyes off the road for just five seconds, but in that time, your car can travel the length of an entire football field. Any distracted driving just isn't worth it. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the 12th Annual Lewis Cruz Classic. The lights are on because of the threatening weather. Lane side with their band here. 857. Marcus Sims is joining us. Daryl Griffin is our spotter, and I'm your play by play announcer, Ted Dixie. Empty backfield set for Lane. Fourth down and three. Trip receivers to the near side, two to the far. They have some confusion on the offensive line, and we have a penalty. A legal procedure against Lane. Back them up five, which means they're going to punt. I hope they're going to punt. Unless they got a real serious field goal kicker, that'd be 57 yards from here. Solomon, the quarterback, still on the field. He gets a signal from the sideline. They're going to try it. Fourth down and eight for Lane for the Bulldog 40. Bulldog defense have to get serious. Number 12 for the Bulldogs, Marvin Smith, encouraging his other student athletes. Let's go defense. Three down linemen for the Bulldog. Now four. They're going to roll the pocket for Solomon. Solomon gets away on one side, trying to line up. He throws the ball. He, oh! Had a receiver down the middle of the field, number four. Solomon tried to hit. That looked like number four, but it's not. It's number eight, Quinny. And Quinny just can't make the catch. Oh, my gosh. Solomon did everything he could to get open and throw the football. The Bulldogs almost let him off the hook. Penalty was an illegal, illegal man downfield. Bulldogs will, because there's the flag right there, the Bulldogs will refuse the penalty, take the ball over first and ten. Wow. What a train of events. Zerion Hayes picks up the official's flag. Don't get cooties. First and ten for the Bulldogs from their 40-yard line now. Bulldogs now going from right to left. 8.47 left to go in the first period. And now they're getting serious. A bunch trip receiver set close to the line of scrimmage to the near side of the field. Hambrick on the far side. Quick toss to Morrow. Morrow trying to pick his way. Lane does a good job of covering it, but Moff, Moff, excuse me. Morrow does a good job. That was Isaiah Nowinko, Nowinko who gets it to three yards out to the 43-yard line. Tomorrow might be done for the day after he walked off the field being upended. Third down and seven. Hand off. Nope. RPO to the near side. Complete to Young near the first down, but it will be marked a little bit short. Quincy Casey in a quarterback now for the Bulldogs. Casey played quarterback last year. The problem with Casey and with Langford, they had more interceptions than touchdowns last year. But Casey's going to get a try. Wondering about Quad Brown. Well, he has a knee injury. He will not play today. Maybe doubtful for the year. Casey, another handoff. Here's oh, here's Noquinco. And he, man, stutter steps somebody, fakes them, fakes me. Ends up inside the 40-yard line down to the 38. Brown on the tackle. Now, Woken Woe doing his thing. Bulldogs moving it. Casey in the backfield will hand off again. Here comes Ike near side, but he'll be stacked up. No gain on the play. Now, who has a better arm? Quincy Casey has the better deep ball arm. Who has been more consistent? Langford has been more consistent. But with Brown's current injury, we're going back to the two quarterback system we saw last year. We hope that both quarterbacks who played last year will improve. You have to throw more touchdowns and interceptions. So with the ace formation, two tight ends, two splits, and one running back, that's Nwokenwo behind Casey. Lane sitting on a single high safety. They're trying to fake a, a, a coverage. And Ike tried to stutter step, but the play was read well by Lane. 
there was a loss on the play back to the 41-yard line. Hassan on the tackle. That Hassan kid is playing lights out. I have to go back and look at the stats. They had him only with two tackles. Well, that's a kick return. <laughs> we have to go in there and fix those. Oh, there were no kick returns for them, but the tackles he had two. Seemed like he did more than that. Third down and 12 for the Bulldogs from the lane 39-yard line. Two receivers far side tied into the near offset eye. Quincy Casey is going to roll the pocket, but he's going to hand it off quickly to, to Nwokenwo, who gets pulled down just outside the 30-yard line. They'll give him progress down to the 32. Sacobia, Josh Sacobia, on the tackle for Lane. And now Ike comes out of the game limping. Field goal unit comes on the field. Victor Barbosa, who was 9 out of 12 last year on field goal attempts, his long being 47, the school record is 49. This would tie the school record. 39-yard, they'll mark it there. It's a 49-yard field goal. Victor Barbosa for the school record. Bulldogs up 14-7. to seven. Out of the snap of Miller. The hold of McCready. Now Whistle comes in. Let's see if Lane's going to try to freeze him here. Delay of game on the Bulldogs. Mm. Coach Maynard's not going to like that. Not with an opportunity with five minutes and two seconds left to go in the first half. Not with an opportunity for a field goal. A record-tying field goal, if you will. And now the punting unit's going to come in. Come on, McCready just turns around. He gets up from being the holder, and now he goes back to be the punter. Let's see if he can find the coffin corner here. That's if he shoots that ball inside the five near one of the pylons. He's holding it, holding it, and now he has a good kick, trying to get that way, but it's going to go into the end zone. No, it bounces inside the five. Now it bounces back inside the 15. The Bulldogs are able to down it and around the 14-yard line. Good job to keep it in there and then to keep it. Lane back, and they will start first and 10 from their 13-yard line. 4.47 left to go in the first period. Bulldogs and Lane in a dog fight. Dog fight with a dragon and a bulldog. 14-7 is the score. Bulldogs had two turnovers in the game. Lane has not been able to capitalize off the turnovers. The Bulldogs also have got two turnovers from Lane. So marching maroon and white makes their way out onto the field in the south end zone. No, that's someone else. <laughs> First and 10 for the lane. 13 goes lane. Handoff trying to come this way. Duhay with the Bulldog defense. Looks like they're going to stiffen up down here, and they do. Cortez Andrews for the Bulldogs. 6'1", 245-pound linebacker from Tennessee. Excuse me, from Tallahassee, Florida. A Florida State transfer. Second down and 10. No gain on the play for lane. Clock running. 420 left in the half 420 away from Marcus Sims and his debut with the electronic media communications halftime show third down and 10 no excuse me second down and 10 from the lane 13 Bulldogs four down lineman laying on a run RP on their side oh my goodness almost intercepted went through the hands of the Bulldog defender almost looked like he pulled an ankle going up to get it and that's number two Caleb Dawson, he popped up off the ground trying to get that interception. Didn't get there. Nevertheless, Raheem Quinney gets it for Lane as we have a timeout while they tend to Dawson. That'll be we play resumes. It will be first down from the 28-yard line of Lane. We'll stay right here as Dawson hops off the field. My goodness, that doesn't look too good. We're going to look to track to see what happens to him on the sideline. So we just went ahead and took a timeout, but we'll stay right here. Lane and the Bulldogs now coming back on the ball. It'll be first and 10 for Lane from their 28. They started this drive on their 13-yard line. They matriculated the ball down the field for 15 yards. Bulldogs going to counter. Four down linemen. Three linebackers, four D-backs. 
Bulldogs now converge on Lane's running attempt on the first down play. They'll take it out to the 30-yard line of Lane. Call a two-yard pickup. Second down and eight for Lane. 325 left in the first half. Bulldogs up 14 to 7. And you can't say that if this happened or that happened, Lane has played quite well. They beat Tennessee State last year. Cornelius Brown, the fourth. No, Lane has a quarterback change. And Solomon's still in the backfield. Solomon's going to keep it on the left side. And I mean, he went to trucking. They'll mark him down at the 39 yard line of Lane. First and 10 for Lane. Now Solomon, whose helmet came off, has to come out of the ball game. And now they have a new quarterback for Lane. It looks like number 10 do, but he's in the backfield. It looked like he was going to move over to quarterback. But it's number 12, Demetrius Pogue. Pogue now barking signals. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far. H back to the far side. And do in the backfield with him. And they hand it off to Dew straight ahead. And Bulldog defense does get there before he gets to the 49, 45 yard line. They'll mark him down at the 43. Give him a pickup of three. Third down, call it six. Tackle made by Pickett. Dorian Pickett, 6'2, 255 pound senior from Beulahville, North Carolina. Another Appalachian State transfer. Appalachian State says they want their student athletes back. Second down and six from the lane 43. Bulldog defense going to shift. They do not get a flag on that. Solomon back in the ball game. Solomon trying to twist and turn. He gets out, and then a flag comes in late. Solomon slides outside the Bulldog 43-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 42 I thought a flag came in, and yes, I can see it. That's got to be a hold. And that is the indication. It is a hold. Back him up 10. Solomon, man, has quick feet. Lane to be a Division II school. Punching the Bulldogs in the face right now, or counterpunching, if you will. Bulldogs up 14-7. to seven. But it's been a fight so far. Back Lane up all the way to their 33-yard line. Second down and 16 now. Lane's going to have two receivers to the near side, one to the far with the tight end. And the running back in the backfield with Solomon back at quarterback. Polo Solomon. Don't ask me. Second and 16. Solomon back to pass. He's going to run the screen to the tight end. Excuse me, to the running back out of the backfield, but he drops the ball. Hit him in a bad place, right on his fingertips. That incomplete pass will leave it third down and 16 for Lane. Lane has to be careful. They're not going to get too many chances. So they have to make the most. And plays like that, just like with the Bulldogs last week at Vanderbilt, Coach Maynard talked about the drop passes. Well, Lane is having a bit of that right now. And what you hear is the marching maroon and white warming up. But Lane brought their band today. That's all right. Third down and 16. Timeout on the field. We'll take 30-second timeout with them. 123 left to go in the first half. Bulldogs up 14-7 over Lane. This is the Alabama A&M Radio Network. Hey, Tennessee Valley, this is Marcella Shapard, the bass man. Every Friday at noon, Kyle LaRue and myself bring you the top 10 jazz albums of the week, along with interviews and a whole lot more on the Cool Jazz Countdown. That's this Friday at noon on 90.9 WJAB. Welcome back to the 12th annual Lewis Cruz Classic, which signifies the opening of the football season with the first home game. Coach Lewis Cruz, who did a lot, and we have several of his athletes that are here. Tommy Lockhart stopped in for a minute to give us a couple of stories here. Did you know Coach Cruz coached an undefeated baseball team as well? Solomon under duress. Bulldogs trying to get there. Solomon being drugged all over the field, and then they get a late screen. Caught at the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 in the Bulldog territory, and finally will go down. I don't know how Solomon got out of that without someone being held. Nevertheless, the broken play that they stayed with 
Ended up being a long screen, first and 10 for Lane for the Bulldog 45-yard line. Excuse me, 44-yard line, just inside the 45. Two receivers near side, one to the far. Solomon coming right side is complete, just outside the 40-yard line. Pick up a four and a half. Call it second down and six. Mm. As the clock is running to the end of the half, Lane not calling timeout. He's got three left. Here's a quick pass to the right side. Receiver makes the grab, goes out of pounds. That's number 14, Jones again. That will be enough for Lane first down. First and 10 for Lane from the Bulldog 34-yard line with 34 seconds left to go in the half. Mm. This might be that game where you said the first half looks like you looked past these these young men and look to next week. Bulldogs now are going to stack the line, only send two receiver, two defenders, and he almost gets there. Solomon is able to dump the ball off, and the receiver, Duel, is tackled out of bounds by number 12 for the Bulldogs, Marvin Smith. So that stopped the clock at 24.2. Lane still with three timeouts. No, excuse me. Looking at the scoreboard, Lane has one timeout left. The Bulldogs have three. The timeout's been taken now because we have a student athlete that's down. And while they tend to him, we'll take a 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout. Bulldogs up 14-7. to seven. This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. Hey, son. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm fine, Pops. What's on your mind? I just, I can't explain it. When your kid can't find the language, help them find the lyrics. Listen to the Sound It Out album and get tips and tools to start a conversation at SoundItOutTogether.org. Brought to you by Ad Council and Pivotal Ventures. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Classic, the 12th annual event, signifying the start of the home football season. 2023 underway, and the Bulldogs ahead of Lane, 14 to 7. A student athlete is on the field, getting tended to, and now Dr. John Greco makes his way out onto the field, which is never a good sign. Dr. Greco can tell when he hears a sound on the field what the injury is. Trying to get the number of the Bulldog, that's number four, that's Sarion Hayes. <coughs> Man, that's a tough one right there and Jerion's going to get up and walk off under his own power may have got a knee in the head but mercy Whew, that was a close one we'd hate to lose one of the leading tacklers for loss in division football championship division last season now Hayes coming off slowly I just hope it's not a concussion but the way he's walking is a little bit dizzy Third down and seven for Lane for the Bulldog 30-yard line. 20 seconds left to go in the half. This is probably the last play. Solomon back to pass. He's going to heave it to the end zone. He has a receiver, but it's out over his outstretched hands. Defended on the play by number 21, Anthony Fielding. But 12.6 seconds left to go. Now it's third down and seven. As the, the bong or the, the gong goes off, signifying third down. Mm. We cannot see Zerion Hayes as he is under the John Greco tent in the sports medicine hut. All that was made famous probably by the University of Alabama. Empty backfield set for Lane. Three receivers to the far side, two to the near. Third down and seven. Solomon back to pass. He's going to heave it, trying to go down low, but it is incomplete. Bounces off the intended receiver's hands. That's number 14, Jones again. Fourth down and seven. 7.8 seconds left to go. 47-yard field goal from here for Lane if they try it. Referee looks like he's going to make a call here. No, he's just going to his position. Fourth and seven. Lane got a timeout. 7.8 seconds left. Peters now running back for Lane. Two, no, one receiver near side trips to the far side. Solomon back to pass. He's just going to heave it to the corner. Tip ball drill. Let's see who comes up with it. No, no one as it bounces out of bounds. That will be the last play of the first half. 
Bulldogs going to the locker room with the lead, 14 to 7. Stay tuned for the Electronic Media Communications halftime show brought to you by Michael, Mike, excuse me, by Marcus Sims. <laughs> Two minute timeout. This is the Alabama A and M Sports Radio Network. The first half of Bulldog football was made possible by WJAB TV, AAMU Front Page, and Electronic Media Communications at Alabama A&M University. Stay tuned for the halftime show on the Alabama A&M Network, WJAB FM, and WJAB.org. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and catch the bus. Text and miss your stop. Wait, 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 wait. Text and be late to work. Sorry, I'm late. Text and work. Text and pretend to work. Text and act surprised when someone calls you out for not working. <clears throat> Who, me? Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. Ugh. Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. As veterans, we're no strangers to helping others. It's what we were taught, trained, and told to do. It could be for anything. Helping a friend move. Listening to a fellow veteran for hours, at any hour of the day. Or just simply making time for people. A neighbor, a loved one, or even a stranger. We're often the first to help others. There's no question about it. But we do have one question for the veterans listening. When was the last time you reached out for help? Perhaps it's time to do for yourself what you can do for others. If you or someone you know needs resources, whether it's for stress, finances, employment, or mental health, don't wait. Ah,
Casey, one of one, five-yard completion. Receiving Cameron Young, four receptions, four yards. Keenan Hamrick, two receptions, 15 yards. One he missed that would have been a touchdown. Let's start at the second half. His lane will kick off to the Bulldogs lane. Blue helmets, white jerseys, white pants. Bulldogs, white helmets, maroon jerseys, maroon pants. As Terrell Gardner takes it up the right side. He's at the 40, 45, 50. 45, 40, 35. Terrell Gardner. Got caught from behind down to like the 31-yard line. Bulldogs trying to get it together after what can only be described as a lackluster first half. Only up 14-7. to seven, Two interceptions, excuse me, two turnovers for the Bulldogs. Tariq Riley, Lane made the tackle. Bulldogs in business. First and 10 from the Lane 31-yard line. Again, looking at the statistics, 
Last week, Vanderbilt, the Bulldogs, held the ball more than Vandy did. And today, they continue that. Langford takes the handoff. RPO to the far side is caught by the receiver. That looks like Hambrick. Number six for the Bulldogs. Yes, number six, Keenan Hambrick. With the reception, pick up a five. Let's call it six down to the 25-yard line of Lane. Bulldogs up 14-7. Now motion from the slot receiver, Young, from the left to right and goes back left. Now we're going to hand it off and go to the right side, excuse me, the left side. Looked like number 30, Morrow, on the carry. No, that's Moffitt on the carry. No, Morrow, 26, back in the ball game, feeling better after me leaving the game in the second quarter after being upended near the goal line. Third down, big third down for the Bulldog offense. Third and three from the lane, 24. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far for the Bulldogs. Diagonal set. Fullback now who moves behind the H-back in offset eye. Langford back to pass, looking to the end zone. Got a receiver. That's Young in the end zone on top of the S. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Great throw by Langford right on the line. Hit Young right in stride. Good job coming out of the second half. I knew Coach Maynard was going to probably not say much. If you've never been in the locker room, as most have not. He doesn't give the big fiery speech. It's not like in the movies, folks. He comes in and says, you need to do what we've coached you to do all week. As now Miller will snap in the hold of McCready. And the extra point off the foot of Victor Barbosa. Hello to the Barbosa family down in South Florida. We know you're listening. Now we have a stoppage in play. Barbosa gets a free kick swing, if you will. Almost like in baseball. Thank you, Marcus Sims, for fine job here at the half. Get you in here. We're going to pour some Gatorade on him at half at the end of the ball game. Welcome him to the team. Now we'll line up and do it again. Miller with the snap. McCready with the hole. Barbosa with the kick. And it is good. Bulldogs go up 21 to 7, 13 39 left to go in the third quarter. Timeout on the field. We'll take a quick 45 seconds. Give them a minute. Bulldogs up 21-7. to This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. Here on 90.9 WJAB, we want to inform you of the movers and shakers in the Tennessee Valley. Join us on WJAB's Yo, Just Checking In. Get engaged with local musicians, artists, businesses, and community leaders. You can also view Yo Just Checking In on WJAB.org and also on WJAB's Facebook page. Keeping you informed with a few laughs. That's WJAB's Yo Just Checking In on 90.9 WJAB and WJAB.org. That's Yo Just Checking In with host Marcus Sims every Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. on WJAB-FM and WJAB.org. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Physical Education Complex. The Bulldogs kicking off. Moffitt still puts that one in the end zone, but Lane's going to run it out. The 10, 15, run out of bounds, just short of the 20-yard line. Lane will take over after the Bulldogs come out the opening drive of the second half and score a touchdown. Lane now first and 10 from their 20. So what is kicking the ball to the end zone get you when you return it from the end zone? There's a five-yard difference right now. If he just would have let the ball go to the end zone, Lane would have started at the 25. As it is, now they're starting at the 20. You cannot give Lane any breathing room. Remember, they beat Tennessee State last year. And still, Tennessee State has more scholarships than they do as the Bulldogs do today. That just makes it more difficult. Trip bunch formation close to the line of scrimmage on the far side of the field. One receiver on the near, one running back in the backfield. Solomon looking downfield. He's going to check it down. Ball is tipped in the air off the hands of the would-be receiver who caught a Charlie horse. Some would say the turf monster got him, but he's up limping. That's number eight. Quinney, who made several catches in the first half. Let's see if they have him listed. He's not even listed in some of theirs. 
I have to look at this now on the stats. They list the times that someone was targeted. Second down and 10 for Lane from their 20. Going to hand it off. And this is where Lane has been getting their bread and butter. That's due on the carry. D-U-H-E. Getting his due. And he will be due to get four yards out to the 24-yard line. Tackled by Bulldogs number 12, Smith. Third down and six. It'd be nice for the Bulldogs to get this going. Be nice for the Bulldogs to get this going. And now, Lane got a pass in the middle of the field. Then it's dropped. Oh, my goodness. That was close enough. That would have been a Lane first down, but it drops the ball. Now the receiver's acting like he should have gotten a penalty. That's Jones again. Nevertheless, Lane will punt. 12.48 left to go in the third period. Bulldogs up 21-7. to The 12th annual Lewis Cruz Classic which has been designed to pay homage. You know, if you don't tell your own history, someone will mess it up for you. And we get to tell the history of Coach Cruz. The punt by Lane towards Gardner, and Gardner tells everyone, Peter, Peter, get away, get away. The ball will go out of bounds. 45-yard line of the Bulldogs. That was Holland. No, excuse me. That's Shiles on the punt. He had two in the first half. Average 32 and a half yards along with 34. The voice you hear now is not the stadium announcer for the Bulldogs. It is the DJ at the football game. Well, that's new. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far. Pistol back. Might be Morrow, who's to the right of Lankford. Now Clark goes in motion from left to right. Now we've got a screen to CJ. Young, over the 45, Young puts his head down, still on his feet. He'll be jumped on, but finally get out of bounds in the 50-yard line thereabouts. They'll say out at the 49, pick up of four. Tackle made by Sokobia, number 39 for Lane. Third down. Now, well, no, excuse me, second down and six. Young was just short of the 50-yard line. We'll have single coverage on the near side. That's Hambrick, who has one-on-one -on -one and two receivers to the far side. Offset eye to the far side of the field. Inside handoff, and he's gone. 40, 35, 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Number 26 for the Bulldogs. The name you need to get to know. Oh, my goodness. Ryan Morrow with the carry. And I mean, he was shot out like a cannon. You like to see the running game. I'm a running game fan. And when Ryan Morrow, the six foot, 203 pound sophomore out of Maplesville High School, you ride him down the highway, and I used to always wonder, when are we going to get a kid from Maplesville? Well, we have now, and that's Ryan Morrow. Miller with the snap, McCready with the hold, and Barbosa with the kick for the extra point. And it is good. 11.47 left to go in the third. Timeout on the field. Bulldogs up 28-7. Timeout on the field. 30-second timeout. This is the Alabama a and Sports Radio Network. Women hear a lot about self-care these days. Advice on ways to relax, exercise, eat healthy, and more. Those are all great. But one of the most important self-care steps we can take is making sure we're financially secure later in life. That means saving money for retirement. It's never too late to start. And it's the kind of self-care that brings peace of mind that lasts. For small steps you can take to save for retirement, visit WeSaySaveIt.org. That's WeSaySaveIt.org. A message from AARP and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Physical Education Complex. We're looking for that scoring drive, which is quite impressive by the Bulldogs. See if it will come back, Sidearm Sports. Play by play, I ask for the drives that we can give them to you, hopefully at the end of the game. Lane's last drive was three yards and four. It will probably come up after this play. Kickoff by Moffitt. Sailing into the end zone again. Man, I'm telling you, that's a good feeling not to have to call. You know, the Bulldogs have had trouble with kick coverage the last several years. When you're in a tight ball game, sometimes we went back and forth. We'd score. Then you go to kick off. And you let someone get a good kick return on you. Good being like 50, 60-yard return. They're in your territory. You're giving them a short field. With Moffitt kicking that ball off, it goes to the end zone. They just won't return it. It's a good job. 
Let's see here if we can get that drive composite. That was a 50-yard running touchdown for Ryan Morrow. That's the long of the season. First and 10 for Lane from their 25-yard line after the touchback. Bulldogs playing, cuff, playing press coverage on the top side. Here's a handoff again to number 10 for Lane, who's been running. <laughs> That's Dew. And Dew keeps going, getting his due. Gain of one on the play. The Alabama A&M drive was two plays, 55 yards, 51 seconds came off the clock. The result was a 50-yard touchdown run by Ryan Morrow. And we hoped last year you might have seen this. You're changing quarterbacks going from McQuill Glass, who had one of the top five passing careers in SWAC history, Ms. King. But you would think this last year we would have run the ball more. Didn't happen, but this season looks like we're playing last season over. Good pass over the middle to number 82 for Lane. That's Darius Naylor, 6'4", 230-pound redshirt freshman tight end from Memphis, Tennessee. Third down and three. You hear the gong in the background coming out of the scoreboard. Bulldogs up 28-7. to And, yes, if some is good, more is better. One thing about the running game is that it takes time off the clock. Now Lane is going to have it one running back in the backfield, four receivers to that side. They're overloaded to the far side. Solomon back to pass going down the middle of the field, way over the head of everyone. His intended receiver was number 14, Jones again. On the play, he was covered by two defenders, including number 21, Anthony Fielding. Is that number two, not number six in the game, Amari Pate? And he's 6'2 and looks every bit of it. So Gardner will go back deep for another punt. Shawls will come up to punt again. The first half, Shawls averaged 32 and a half yards per punt. Which means Gardner needs to be about where he is. Shawls line drive is going to bounce on the near side. Go out of bounds. No chance for a return. Jonathan Williams, number 52, the Bulldogs all-conference right tackle getting ready the ball bounce near him and the Bulldogs getting ready to take over again first and 10 from their 36 yard line 10 5 left to go in the third period Bulldogs up 28 to 7 and trying to get some more Lane proved to be a formidable opponent in the first half the score was just 14 to 7 at the half but you see the Bulldogs have put up a quick 14 points in five minutes let's see if we can get some more That one score that was interesting at the half was Alabama being down to Texas. Tell you how good Bryce Young was. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from their 36-yard line. Double fullbacks in the I formation. Play action pass handoff. And now Gardner trying to go down the field and someone gets pulled to the ground. It looked to me as if Gardner pulled the defensive player to the ground. And now the defensive player can't get up because his ankle looked like it twisted. He and Gardner got tied up. That's number 25, Nicholas Patterson for Lane. As they tend to him, we'll tend to this timeout. 30-second timeout, 9.56 left to go in the third. Bulldogs up 28-7. This is the Alabama a and Sports Radio Network. What I know about courage, I learned from my adoptive mom. She said sometimes you just got to hold on and know we'll get through this. Mom, we are so high up. Hold my hand. <laughs> no, you hold my hand. Here we go. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. This message is brought to you by Adopt US Kids, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Classic Year 12. Also, welcome back to the Hill, Marcus Bird, Director of Financial Aid, his father, Taylor Bird, and my dad were at Penn State together getting PhDs. Hand off, and Lane smelled it a mile away. Bulldogs going to lose eight yards on the play, all the way back to inside the Bulldog 30, and they'll say down to 30, excuse me, 29-yard line. Goodness. That one didn't have a chance at all. Lane read that one from start to finish. 
Lankford still in the ball game, number 16. The half, Lankford was six out of eight, one interception, 30, no, excuse me, into the first. Screen pass for the Bulldogs. Made the catch after the diving defender. Almost got there, but that's Young on the carry. Excuse me, on the reception and the run after the catch. Just gets the Bulldogs back to the original line of scrimmage. Now you're going to see what Austin McCready can do as a punter. If Lane doesn't come forward, they'll probably try to set up a return. Back deep for them is number 84, Terrence Holland. McCready will have a three-person screen, the two gunners on the outside. Lane comes for it, but McCready gets it up, and oh my goodness, turns over. It's a high rainmaker, and it will be fair caught at the 16-yard line. That was a pedestrian 40-yard punt, <laughs> easily from McCready. And Lane will take over first and 10 from the 16 as soon as the punt, excuse me, as soon as the statistics are updated. I'll be able to tell you about that punt. But I think I counted it. First and 10 for Lane from their 16-yard line. Lane trailing the Bulldogs 28-7. And it would take a monumental effort for Lane to get back in this one. One of my high school classmates, Jeff Owens, graduated from Lane College. Jackson, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. It was about a good hour and a half ride from Jacksonville, if not further. I think they're closer to Memphis than they are to Nashville. First and ten. Lane's going to fake the screen left. Moff, excuse me. Solomon trying to get out. He finds a receiver. The kid is really good at that. Finds a receiver on the far side. He's over the 35, over the 40. He'll be brought down about the 41-yard line. That's Virgil Young on the catch. So Lane runs three plays on the same play. They fake the screen to the left, fake the middle RPO, and Solomon had the presence of mind to roll the pocket and then find the receiver on the far side. Handed off again is Moffitt right up the middle again. That looks like number eight for, it looked like Quinny, but it is due. On a carry. Dude's going to finish with well over 100 yards for this game. Lane has another first down. First and 10 to the Bulldogs. 49-yard line. Mm. I see how Lane beat Tennessee State last year. Hand off again. That's Dude. Trying to come left side. you got to put more than one hat on him. The Bulldogs gang tackle him and put him down at the 49-yard line. No gain on the play. Second down and 10 coming. Bulldogs up 28-7. a 10-yard run. Douglas and Thomas are giving credit for the tackle for the Bulldogs. Excuse me, Thomas Douglas was given credit for the tackle. Second and 10 for the Bulldogs. 49 goes lane. Two receivers on the far side with the eights back, one to the near. Solomon's going to fake the pass right, trying to run around the pocket. And he went to spinning around back there, and the Bulldogs finally get there. Hayden Guilford led other Bulldogs there. So a little dance comes out. That's number nine of the Bulldogs. That's Jordan Mitchell. Another one, the Appalachian State transfer. I think we said three, but we might have four on the team. All ball all the way back now to the lane 47. Clock running 630 left to go in the third. Trip receivers to the far side, one to the near, along with the pistol back. They'll run the swing pass and it's near side to do. This time the Bulldogs hurry up and get there. Nice tackle made open field by number 21, Fielding, for the Bulldogs. Good job by Fielding. The 5'10", 175-pound redshirt junior from Apopka, Florida. A Georgia Southern transfer. Now it is fourth down and 14. Gardner back deep, just outside his 25. Shiles will punt, end over end, twister. Gardner tells everyone to get away again. It'll bounce sideways towards the Bulldog bench. And will be down by number 31, Tatum of Lane. Bulldogs now will take over. 539 left to go in the third period. Bulldogs up 28-7. to Now the Bulldogs will be going left to right, wearing the white helmets with the maroon stripe, maroon interlocking AAMU logo. Maroon jerseys, maroon pants, white numerals, white stripe. 
Oh, my goodness. 47 seconds left to go in the fourth period. Miles is up on Alabama State, 21-17. South Florida beating up on Florida A&M, 24-14. Stephen F. Austin over Alcorn State, 15-10. And Miles beat Alabama State. We're going to have to widen the state tournament. Bulldogs handoff, no RPO. And caught by Keenan Hambrick at the 50-yard line, giving progress to the 49. Smooth-looking RPO out of the hands of Xavier Langford. Nicholas Patterson on the tackle for Lane. Bulldogs hurry up. Trip receivers to the near side. Spears at the tip. Another RPO far side, this time caught by Gardner. On the slam from the far side, he's down at the 40-yard line just inside the 40. Tatum on that tackle. Bulldogs hurrying up. Dwayne Taylor, late of the XFL, Las Vegas franchise, now back with the Bulldogs, offensive coordinator. Showing a little bit what the pro game helps you develop, but in my opinion, the college game leads pro football in offensive ingenuity. Handoff again here. Oh, RPO to the right, to the left side this time. Gums goes up the ladder and pulls it down. That'll be enough, uh, just short of a first down, but it's a good eight-yard pickup for the Bulldogs. Down to the 31-yard line of lane. Bulldogs up 28-7. Looking for more. Second down and three. We want to see if Alabama State cannot come back against Miles. Here's another play action pass. Oh, he had the angel tight end ride open. That's Brian Clark on the far side. That pass has been Langford's Achilles heel, if you will, when he goes left. And he stands there. He needs to get his mechanics together because he's either overthrowing the intended receiver or underthrowing them. I mean, skipping it on the ground. Mm, third down and three for the Bulldogs from the lane 32. Let's keep the drive going. Langford, one set back behind him. Two receivers for the Bulldogs to the near side. In the slot, we have a new number. That's Jacoby Hewitt, number three, 6'1", 210 pound senior. Langford going to run the option to the far side. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's some trouble over there as Morrow takes the carry. He'll get enough for a first down. Then run him out of bounds. It's about the 27-yard line of Lane. Jackson State 13, Southern 7. Jackson State trying to bounce back from their loss last week. Tennessee State 14, Arkansas Pine Bluff. Nothing. Timeout on the field. We'll take a minute. Take it with them. 45-second timeout. Bulldogs up 28-7. to This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. I learned patience from my adoptive dad. All he had to say was, Hey, you got this. Just breathe. Hey. <laughs> We're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Might have to start a band. <laughs> Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. <laughs> Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. This message is brought to you by Adopt US Kids, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Physical Education Complex. And yes, Ted Dixie on the play-by-play, Daryl Griffin, our spotter, Kevin Cofield, our intern, Marcus Sims. On the board behind us, taking Michael Burns' place, the newly retired Michael Burns, who today comes back to be the stadium announcer, sitting in for Ronald and Patricia Michaela McIntosh. Hope all goes well. And it didn't go well for Alabama State. Miles beat them. I'm still looking for the final score. There it is. No, I don't see it. They took it off the board already. Grambling down LSU 28-10. But Alabama State was up 24 to 21, I believe. 21 to 13. That's a different number. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from the 28 yard line of Lane. Langford going to hand it off right up the middle again. Bounces at the 20, at the 18, still on his feet at the 10, and finally brought down. Oh, my goodness. We'll try to see who that running back was. Number 26, that's tomorrow again. Feeling much better in a timeout now on the field. We have a lane student athlete now. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout with them. Bulldogs up 28 to 7, 333 left to go in the third. This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. If I could be you. And you could be me for just one hour. If you could find a way 
to get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to the 12th annual Lewis Cruz Classic. The Lane student athlete gets up under his own power. It looks like number 38, Ellison. No, number 39, Sokovia, who's played an outstanding game. We've called his name a couple of times. Sokovia, I thought that was almost like something out of the Avengers. But nevertheless, Mr. Sokovia gets up, and we're happy he does. First and goal for the Bulldogs from the lane nine. Now we have some unreadiness and some motion. Looks like an illegal procedure against the Bulldogs. My goodness. Let's see if I find that halftime stat sheet. I'm trying to see what our penalties were at the half. At the half, Bulldogs had four penalties, and I believe we've had two more in the second half. Sign of an undisciplined team would be a lot of penalties, and neither have done that today. First and goal from the 14-yard line of Lane goes the Bulldogs. Lane's showing a blitz, but this time it runs against tomorrow at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Ryan Morrow shot like a cannon. Nowinkano gets a touchdown, and then Morrow says, I need one, too. That will push the score to 34-7 to with the extra point to come. Now it looks like more of what we should have seen. And you can see this action on the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Kano Maynard tomorrow night at around 10.30 on WZDX Channel 54. And if you wait a couple of weeks, the first home game today, the Lewis Cruz Classic, was also the premiere of From the Hill Live game day show that will show every game day morning at 8.30 on Channel 48 WAFF. And Barbosa's extra point is good. Timeout on the field. 30-second timeout. Bulldogs up 35-7. to This is the Alabama a &M Sports Radio Network. My mom has taken up going to the park to practice yoga. My dad's going to a club, but not a book club. A salsa club. Finding new hobbies comes with age. My mom has started getting lost and not knowing where she's going. Becoming lost or disoriented doesn't. Confusion with time or place may be a sign of Alzheimer's. An early diagnosis can help improve the quality of life for your loved one. Learn the warning signs of Alzheimer's at 10signs.org. Brought to you by the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Classic. I'm cracking jokes in here. Ted Dixie, your play-by-play -play announcer, along with my spotter, Daryl Griffin. Marcus Sims, our halftime host. And our intern, Kevin Copefield. Setting the record for the oldest intern in history. Luke Moffitt prepares to kick off. Trying to put one in the end zone again. And yep, there it goes. Man, I love seeing those moonshots on kickoff. <laughs> I promise you that. If there is anything in recruiting that we needed, we needed a kicker that could put the ball in the, as I like to say, between the L and the D. And since that happened, Lane will now start first and 10 from their 25-yard line. Bulldogs going to be a little nicked up after this game. We've seen Emma and her crew, Emma Brackett. Hello to Mr. and Mrs. Brackett who are listening. Hello to those of you listening in North Carolina. That will be Coach Maynard's brother Craig and Missy and the crew. They probably got about 100 people listening and watching this game on YouTube, and you can too. Alabama A&M Athletics is the YouTube channel. Here's a handoff again to Dew. Dew goes right, comes back left. And runs into two Bulldog defenders, but not before he picks up another five yard. No, they say six now. That kid, Dew, can run the football. Dew, who is 5'8", 185-pound redshirt junior out of Garyville, Louisiana, West St. John High School. Man, he can tote it. Second down and four for Lane from their 31. Bulldogs, four down linemen, one linebacker in the box. Hand it off again. Dew goes right. Comes all the way back left. He's at the 35, 40, 45, 50, 45. Dew finally pulled out of bounds by the Bulldogs. Number six, Amari Pate. 
but not before he makes a heck of a run, nearly 20 yards on the play. They'll run him out of bounds at the 44 of the Bulldogs. Mm. And I mean, he was shot out of a cannon. He runs right, it's stacked up, and he's got the vision to see that the lane is at the right and the left side of the offense, and he comes back that way, and then he takes off. First and 10 for Lane from the Bulldog 44. The Lane special team, excuse me, skill position players looking to the sideline. Trip receivers to the far side. The far two are flanked off the line of scrimmage, tight end to the near side. We're going to fake it this way and throw it that way, complete the 40-yard line, and then he makes a move on the Bulldog defender at the 35 and another move at the 30. Lane down number 80. Jeremiah, Jeremiah Santel with the reception and the run after the catch. That's going to look good on the stats. First and 10 for Lane from the Bulldog, 28. 120 left to go in the third period. Lane driving, trip receivers to the near side. Hand off to Dew again. Same play. Dew comes right, comes back left, and then this time he zigs back right. He goes all the way down to the Bulldog 23-yard line. Tackle made by 51, Xavier Billingsley out of the middle linebacker position. And Lane, the clock just running, 58 seconds. Lane with three timeouts. Down 35-7. to seven. Trip receiver to the near side due to the left of Solomon. Solomon going to Fake the handoff, RPO the middle of the field, and it will fall well short of the intended receivers. That's because Solomon was under pressure by one of the Bulldogs. Trying to get the number. It looks like I wanted to say number 11, but that's not him. Yeah, it might have been. Shaquem Gloucester Pace, 6'4", 220-pound redshirt sophomore out of Opalaka. Not Opalaka, Opalaka, Florida. From Florida International. Third down and call it Four for Lane. Lane down 35 to 7. This may be the last play of the third quarter. Solomon back to pass. He's got a receiver in the middle of the field. It's complete to number four. Excuse me, number five, Young. And he is down, but that will be enough for a Lane first down. There's a little scuffle on the field now, getting a little chippy there. And the clock just still running. Let it run. Excuse me, and it will be first and goal from the 17. Barbara Jean looks like a good night for football. As the clock runs down to the third period, we'll switch ends, take a two-minute break. Bulldogs up on lane, 35-7. to seven. This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -hmm. Text and catch the bus. Text and miss your stop. Wait, 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 wait. Text and be late to work. Sorry, I'm late. Text and work. Text and pretend to work. Text and act surprised when someone calls you out for not working. <clears throat> Me? Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. <sighs> Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. <laughs> Here at WJAB, we know our listeners are looking for more than just music. We know that you want an experience that only radio can give, especially in the wee hours of the morning. We invite you to listen to a new program that brings you jazz for those who feel jazz. Pub Radio Jazz at midnight until 5 a.m. Various hosts will present acoustic mainstream jazz focusing on a strong lyrical sound that will delight you, the casual listener and passionate jazz lover. That's Pub Radio Jazz, weekdays from midnight to 5 a.m. on WJAB-FM and WJAB.org. Good morning, Harding. 
Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Classic, the opening game of the home schedule for the Alabama and m Bulldogs. Bulldogs up 35-7, just starting the fourth period. I'm Ted Dixie, your play-by-play -play host, along with our spotter, Daryl Griffin. Marcus Sims on the ones and twos, as we like to say, and then our intern, Kevin Cofield, who will get Social Security before his internship runs out. First and ten for Lane. From the Bulldogs' 16-yard line, Lane down 35-7. to Trip receivers to the near side, one tight end to the far, one running back. They're going to hand it off to Dew. And Dew, oh man, finally the Bulldogs get there in a hurry. Tackle made by number 93, Dorian Wesley, 6'5", 280-pound redshirt junior from Flat Rock, Michigan. University of Toledo, speaking of Toledo, Toledo beat Texas Southern today, 71-3. Bethune-Cookman up over Savannah State, 31-6. LSU over Grambling, 35-7. Excuse me, 35-10. The Bulldogs go to Grambling a few weeks. Abilene Christian beating Prairie View, 45-7. We already told you about Alabama State going down like good soup. Solomon over the middle of the field, and it is complete. The defender was all over his back, but still not could not prevent the tackle being made. Tristan Graham for the Bulldogs. No, Christian Silverstein for the Bulldogs. 6'1", 185-pound freshman. Don't think that's him. Might have had a jersey change. Reception made by Quinney. First and goal for Lane from the Bulldogs. Six. Lane trailing 35-7. Going to hand it off again to Dune. He's wide open on the left side. Touchdown, Lane. Excuse, excuse me. That's Marlon Peters. The missed tackle for the Bulldogs. And now Lane goes up. Excuse me, that was Lane's running back into the end zone. Lane now will trail the Bulldogs 35-13 to with the extra point to come. Shaw's on for the extra point attempt out of the hold of Jarrett Gaston. Mm. Lane has been able to put together some good-looking drives. And just not enough of them. And the Bulldogs block it. Got to pick it up and the Bulldogs can get a point. Scoop and score. The Bulldogs pick it up. He's got a convoy trying to get all the way. 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. El Marvin Smith with the pick up, scoop, and score off the block. Extra point. Two points for the Bulldogs. And now... This is really crazy. Now the Bulldogs, there is a free kick that will happen. And the Bulldogs will still get the ball back. You get two points and you get the ball back. Wow. Those are the kind of things that you'd like to see. Coach Mayner talked about what improvements he wanted to see from between week one and week two. Well, you stop the drops. You want to increase your receptions, you want to turn down the turnovers. The Bulldog, Bulldogs only had one against Mandy. Had two earlier tonight, but they got that done after the first half. And then you get a blocked extra point, which you might as well say is a blocked field goal. It's a scrimmage kick. Bulldogs go all the way the other way, and then they'll still get the ball back because you change possession after the touchdown. And now the Bulldogs get a chance to press on. So that's a six point. That two points is a four-point turnaround now instead of a six or seven-point advantage for Miles. Back deep for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs now going right to left, and Miles kicking off from left to right. Terrell Gardner, Cameron Young back deep. Wow. 37 to 13 is our score. Miles with the on, no, excuse me, stalls with the onside kick. And now they're scrambling around, and Lane says they have it. Caught the Bulldog unaware. Mm, and Lane does. Lane, Bulldog's thinking it was going to be a deep kick. Lane just, Stalls just kicked it down and ran behind it. Michael Brock recovers it from Lane. Oh, my goodness. Change of fortune on that one. 37-13 is the score, and Lane clearly practicing for later in the season. You like to see good football programs, just not when you play them. 
Nevertheless, the dog houses are full of excitement. The ones that are on the near side, even though they are all sold out. I'm going to go down after the game and go check them out. First and 10 for Lane from the Bulldog, 48 after the onside kick. Surprised even me. Solomon, the quarterback. Play action pass. He's going to look left. Bulldogs trying to get there. Solomon chasing the pocket. Now he tries to stand up and still throw it. And he'll get pulled to the ground after he gains about three. Trying to see who tackled him. Looked like number 54 for the Bulldogs. No, we'll say number seven, Jamarion Ellis. Excuse me, Jamarion Ellis. Three-yard pickup on the play. Second down and seven for Miles from the, excuse me, for Lane. From the Bulldog, 45. I'm stuck on Miles because they beat Alabama State today. Handoff going left side. Is Lane's number 26, Peters. There's the gong. Third down. Call it third and five for Lane. Yeah, Alabama State took it on the chin today. Mm. Then Jackson State came back. Beat up on Southern 27. That's where we're headed next week. Wow. Third down and five. Play action pass. RPO. Middle of the field. Picked off. Going the other way of the Bulldogs. The 45-50. 45, run out of bounds. That's the Bulldogs, number six, Imari Pate. I think that's his second interception of the day. Pate playing stellar football back there at safety. Man, your defense really looks different when you have a ball hawk at safety. And he went and got it. The RPO was kind of executed well. And I say kind of, but Pate just read it. And he stepped right in front of it. Bulldogs get the ball back after the onside kick by Lane. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from the Lane 40. 12 10 left to go in the ball game. Bulldogs up 37 to 13. Wow. Lankford in the backfield. Quick pitch to the right side. Looks like Gardner. And he is snowed under. No, that was Young. There were a lot of those plays for Young. Peterson. On the tackle for Lane. Loss of four. Back to the 44. 11.51. Stephen F. Austin, 15. Alcorn, 10. South Florida, 24. Florida A&M, 14. Tennessee State, 14. Pine Bluff, 0. Jackson State, 20. Southern, 7. That's in the third period. Prairie View down to Abilene, 45-7. Langford taking the snap. The offset eye is going to hand it off again. That's Morrow right up the middle. Morrow's going to get back that lost yardage and get the ball back to nearly the original line of scrimmage. Give him three yards on the carry. I uh, give him four. That's about where they marked it. Now they take the yard away. Third down and 11 for the Bulldogs. Clock running. 11 minutes left to go in the fourth period. Bulldogs up 37 to 13. Same formation, offset I to the near side. Two receivers, but tight end, H-back, no, tight end to the H-back to the far side. Play action pass. Pass the near side. Wide open is the receiver. Good play by the Bulldogs. They ran everyone downfield, and one receiver broke off his pattern. Now they're a little chippy behind the line of scrimmage. Darian Turner. A 6'3", 215-pound red shirt sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee. A University of Arkansas transfer. That play will give the Bulldogs all the way down to the 28-yard line of Lane and give the Bulldogs enough for a Bulldog first down. Bulldogs up 37-13. Diagonal backfield. Two receivers either side. Going to hand it off again tomorrow. He picks his way. He spins as he's hit, still on his feet at the 15, at the 10, 5. Morrow cut down short of the goal line by number 25, Patterson. Morrow almost scored on that one. You like the running game of the Bulldogs and trying to get the, the quickie stats here. 
Let's go to leaders. See what we get. First and goal for the Bulldogs from call it the two. Hand off for Morrow. Get him in the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Ryan Morrow gets another touchdown on the day. And now the will is beginning to be imposed. 43 to 13 is the score with the extra point to come. And now we've, I don't know if we have an injured student athlete on the field for Lane. But Emmett, excuse me, Emma, Bracket, and the crew, I guess that's why they say EB. Now they get everyone separated and they get the student athlete off the field. This is the kind of game with Lane as intense as they are, and the Bulldogs equally as intensive at the 43-13 lead now with the extra point to come off the foot of Victor Barbosa out of the hold. Austin McCready, and now the snap. Miller. Snap. Hold. Kick. It is good. Timeout on the field. 9-17 left to go in the ball game. Bulldogs go up 44-13. to This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. into the building for the first time after the shooting. It was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Poma, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the 12th annual Lewis Cruz Classic. I'm Ted Dixie, your play-by-play -play announcer. Daryl Griffin, our spotter. Marcus Sims, ones and twos with it in our halftime host. Kevin Cofield, our intern, has gone off to see what the attendance is tonight. Just to remind you, you can see all the action that took place tonight and hear what Coach Maynard's thoughts are on the Alabama a &M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Produced by ABO Productions. Right on. Love working with them on Sunday morning. Got to get a couple of laughs and get that early. Be shown tomorrow night around 1030 on WZDX Channel 54. We thank Mo Carter for all of his coverage. Thank you for Channel 48 for On the Hill Live as the Bulldogs run someone else onto the field. And, man, that's another kick to the end zone. Boy, I tell you what. <laughs> If it's something I like besides winning, is that kickoff going right to the end zone? Man, Alabama State losing to Miles. It'll be that way if we lose the Tuskegee home coming too. Now, switching possessions here, 9 and 17 left to go in the ball game. Lane will take over first and 10 from their 25. You kick that ball into that end zone, there's not a return. The team takes the receivers, take that ball out. Starting at their 25-yard line. They tried to return one and just got it up to the 20-yard line. So you're really looking at a five-yard difference whether you take it or not. Demetrius Pogue in at quarterback now for Lane. Number 11. He's going to take it, scramble left side, and go around the edge. He'll pick up a couple of yards. crowd has not been announced, but we find out that it's a little over, over 8,000 tonight. I was hoping for 10. Second down and 8-4 lane from the 27. Trip receivers to the near side, one to the far, pistol back, who will take the handoff, and that's Jones, the receiver, coming out of the backfield. No, that's 24. Jamarquez Banks, running back. Lane emptying their bench, obviously. Just almost what we tried to do at Vanderbilt, but we were so close to winning that a lot of our starters, especially with Vanderbilt starters, stayed in the game through halfway through the fourth quarter. We were substituting along the way. That's where we found Caleb Dawson, who was our leading tackler last week. This week, Marvin Smith, 
Jordan Mitchell doing the work. Both have at least 10. Hand off again. That's back to number 24, Banks. And he will get enough for a lane first down out over the 35-yard line. Around the 36 is where they'll mark him down. 7.50 left to go in the ball game. Like nothing better for Lane to keep the ball. You can go out with a bang. If I know the Bulldogs, Coach Bolware, Keonis Bolware, the defensive coordinator. And I haven't looked to see what coaches are up in the booth. I'm going to hand it off again going left side. That's number 11, Aaron Burton, 5'10", 175-pound freshman running back out of Columbus, Georgia. Greenwood High School, Glenwood High School, excuse me. Say hey to all the folks down in Columbus. And hey to most of you listening around the world, North Carolina, Maryland, Atlanta, Houston, Austin, Los Angeles. And I know there are a couple of service people listening. Thank you for what you do. Hand off again, goes right up the middle for Lane. And they'll bounce down and be brought down around the 41-yard line. It's number 11 again. Burton. Tackle made by the Bulldogs, number 50, Demetrius Biambi. Out of South Florida. Third down and six for Miles. No, I'll call a long five. Bulldog defense. Be nice to get off the field here. Then we can hold the ball for the rest of the game. Four down lineman for the Bulldogs. Single high safety. As soon as he turns, I'm going to bet that's Pate. Pass to the left side. Oh, my goodness. The defender gets there right away. Read that the whole way. That's number 10, Cortez Andrews, 6'1", 245-pound junior linebacker. The Florida State transfer. And now Lane will punt from a promising drive to punting to the Bulldogs. Six minutes left to go in the ball game. At halftime, it was a little bit shaky there for the Bulldogs. Didn't know whether we were going to be able to take what, my, what, Lane, excuse me, what Lane was giving out. Still talking about Miles and Alabama State. Bulldogs show token pressure. Gardner's going to get a chance to return. He puts his head down. Still on his feet. 35-40. 45-50. Gardner's still on his feet. 45-yard line. Gardner gone. 35-25-15. 10 5 Touchdown. Tell Gardner. His second of the season, third for his career, no flags on the play. Cut, punt, return, touchdown for the Bulldogs. Wow. Gardner just would not be denied on the play. His stutter step and Lane had about four defenders around him in a halo. He stepped through one tackle, spun on another one, and it was off to the races. Oh, my goodness. And Gardner, when I interviewed him, during practice this week, he had just scored a touchdown on a play. That's why he was out of breath. And now out of the snap of Miller, the hold of McCready, the extra point attempt from Barbosa, it is good. Timeout on the field, 522 left to go in the game. Bulldogs hit the 50 mark. 51-13 to 13 is our score. Timeout on the field, 30-second timeout. This is the Alabama A&M Sports Radio Network. My simple solution to the problem was remove people from the scene and help them feel safer. In response to attacks against Asian Americans, Maddie Park raised over $250,000 to donate cab rides to the Asian community. There is so much more work to be done. We really need to come together and tackle this issue as a community. Support the Asian community. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Lewis Cruz Classic. Number 12 in the books. Bulldogs go up 51 to 13. That's what you want to see. When you talk about improvement from week one to week two. Gardner's return 69 yards. I said at the beginning of the season practice like coach. When you going to get me to Fred Ferrier who's one of the special team coordinators. Coach when you going to get me a punt return to talk about on the air. Well Gardner just gave me one. Wow, Lee Jean. Bulldogs up 51 to 13. Moffitt with the kickoff. Going down the left side. It's high. Doesn't make the end zone this time. It'll be fielded at the seven. Lane coming this way. 
Jones still on his feet, and he'll be brought down to the 25-yard line. Could just let that one go in the end zone, save yourself that beating, but never mind. <laughs> Lane, take over first and 10. That's Holland on the return. My goodness. Nothing like getting a little bit of excitement. We'll make sure that all of that action is captured and you will see it. Good job by the folks who take care of us video-wise. Let me pull those names up for you. Andrew, Andrew Karstarfin and Jordan Norsworthy. I guess I said that. It's close. I'll get better, folks. I think Jordan and I were talking. I said, Norsworthy, right? He said, yeah, Norsworthy. I said, didn't I say that? He said, no, nah, I said it a little different. Okay, Norsworthy. First and 10 for, my, for Lane, excuse me. <laughs> Three receivers to the far side. You can run the RPO that way. Ball tipped in the air. It'll be caught. By the lane receiver, man, he was in the right place at the right time. He makes the catch out to the 31-yard line. That's Jeremiah Sartell with the catch. That's a lane first down, four minutes, 50 seconds left to go in the ball game. We're going to head over to the field house and see what the doings is after the games. The doings are, excuse me, Barbara Jean. You know, we missed a lot of people that used to listen to Bulldog football. Evelyn Rich was one of them. Most of us have lost someone after, during, and before the pandemic. So let us, let us know that your our thoughts and prayers are with you. Catch by Jones at the 45-50. Jones run out of bounds, short of the Bulldog 45-yard line. Looking to see, and the Bulldogs have a couple of student athletes on the field we have not seen. Did not know we had two offensive, two 52s. There's Jalen Wright, who's on the field, who's in on that tackle, 5'11". 235-pound freshman, Birmingham, Alabama, Ramsey High School, same high school as Terrell Gardner. First and 10 for Lane from their 47-yard line. Clock running, 350 left to go in the ball game. A little over 8,000 tonight here at the game. And the folks gathered down here at the bottom of the Marching Maroon and White for the bandhead event. Here's a deep pass by Lane. He has a receiver over through him and everyone else. Defended on the play by Tristan Graham of the Bulldogs. Intended receiver was Quinney. Number eight for Lane. Incomplete pass, second down and ten. Don't forget, folks, next week the Bulldogs are off to Baton Rouge. First SWAC conference game of the year. Southern playing. No, that's Grambling playing LSU. Southern losing to Jackson State 20 to 7. And now the ball on the on the ground and a flag comes in. And I don't know if they're gonna call a penalty on the Bulldogs 90. Nicholas Glenn, a six foot, 270 pound red shirt sophomore from Deerfield, Deerfield Beach, Florida. Personal foul, roughing the passer against the Bulldogs. Mm, that's a tough one. When quarterbacks scramble around, and we were talking about this last week at Vandy. When quarterbacks scramble around, when they leave the pocket, they cease to become only a passer and become a rusher and a passer. But the rules have become so liberal that the defender can't afford to pull up because you might get a completed pass thrown on you. So you try to run through the quarterback. So you're really in no person's land, if you will. And that's what Coach Maynard is talking about right now. The man left the pocket. How can that be rushing roughing the passer and we'll be sure to ask coach Maynard about that coach Maynard looking good in his white shirt and khaki pants and those sweet right white shoes now figure out what I gotta do to get a pair of shoes Jackson State up on Southern 27 the Bulldogs visit Southern next week that game on ESPN plus this one had no television but you can go to the AAMU Alabama and m Sports YouTube channel. Bulldogs try to get there again in the backfield. That's number 61 that caused all that pressure. C.J. Dunn, a 6'4", 250-pound junior defensive end from Bourbonnet, Bourbonnet, Illinois. Northern Illinois transfer. Second down and 10. Clock stopped at 319. Two to see. Second down and 10 for Lane. From the Bulldog 37. Lane would like nothing more than score here at the end of the game like the Bulldogs did. Nashville. 
against Vanderbilt. Here's a pass down the left side. Intercepted late down the middle. No way you should make that throw. 35-40. 45-50. Sit on his feet and just wiped out inside the 45-yard line of Lane. Interception made by the Bulldogs. Number 36, Lynn Petway. Safety, 5'9", 170-pound redshirt freshman out of Montgomery, Alabama. Park Crossings High School. Drew Marshall planted him. He got to the other side of the field. Welcome to the Southwestern Athletic Conference, son. As the cars are making their way up to Meridian Street. And the beats are coming through the sound system. We have one of the better sound systems in the conference, folks, let me tell you. As President Wims remarked one day, you can feel that in your chest. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from the Bulldog 43. Going to hand it off again. Going to the left side, trying to see which Bulldog this is carrying now. Number four, Cam Young on the carry. Out of the backfield. No check that. <laughs> Number 12, Corey Chavis, <laughs> who's in there in the running back spot. No, Corey is in at quarterback now. Good job by Corey. Corey Chavis, number 12. 6'6", 200-pound freshman out of Redford, Michigan, Redford Union High School. I saw him at halftime and said, hey, man, learn the plays. So we've seen Xavier Langford, Quincy Casey, and now the Bulldogs' third quarterback. That's what a 51-13 score does. Carried by number 42, Barry White. The tight end for the Bulldogs. Coach Maynard doesn't mind seeing what other people can do. If you've ever gone to practice, he'll find someone during the season and tell his position coach, give that kid a chance, and you'll be surprised. Coach Maynard's eye for talent and where they can be utilized is magnificent. Third down and two for the Bulldogs. And I have to stop in on one of the booths. Someone gives Coach Maynard a hard time and said he'll, she'll send two women in a truck for him. Here's a handoff up the middle. And blasting through Bulldog. What do you like about the Bulldog rushing attack? Again, that's Barry White again, a tight end listed. But then he was a young man I was speaking about that Coach Manor said, put him at fullback. Let's see what he does. Well, he's getting a chance to carry the ball tonight. 120 left in the clock. Good job by our intern today. Thank you so much. You too can be an intern here at a Bulldog football game. Just contact Marcus Sims at the station. He'll get you lined up and work you to death. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from the 29-yard line. Hand off again up the middle, and the Bulldogs are just going to push that pile all the way down to the 25-yard line, four-yard pickup. 51 seconds left to go, and let's see if the Bulldogs can meander enough. The play clock, because the rules have changed again in college football. Right when you go down, the play clock changes. It's really been that way for years, but now it's being enforced. Bulldogs just have to snap it one more time. 19 seconds on the play clock, 37 thereabout on the game. Been a fine afternoon, good way to celebrate Coach Lewis Cruz, who has done so much. And you know the mark as the Bulldogs take the victory formation. Number 12, Corey Chavis does the honors. 20 seconds on the clock for Coach Cruz, which you, how you can tell that he is really, really a very valued person in our community. Look to see what his student athletes went on to do in subsequent life. Even some of them are old now and have trouble getting around. Some of the lives that they have affected are here today. So we thank you to Coach Cruz and to his family for those who gave more than they should have. And that will do it. 51-13 to 13 is our final score. Thank you so much for listening. When we come back, we'll have the post-game show and wrap it up from the 12th annual Lewis Cruz Classic Bulldogs Beat Lane, 51-13. This is the Alabama a and Sports Radio Network. The second half of Bulldog football was made possible by WJAB-TV, Inside Connection, and electronic media communications at Alabama A&M University. Stay tuned for the post-game show on the Alabama A&M Network, WJAB-FM and WJAB.org. As 
veterans, we're no strangers to helping others. It's what we were taught, trained, and told to do. It could be for anything. Helping a friend move. Listening to a fellow veteran for hours, at any hour of the day. Or just simply making time for people. A neighbor, a loved one, or even a stranger. We're often the first to help others. There's no question about it. But we do have one question for the veterans listening.